I guess I'm live now. <laughs> Hi, David. Hey, Young. Hey, Sandra. Hey, Mitra. <laughs> hey, Bernie. Hey Marie. Yeah, we'll be on at nine. That's when I will introduce my uh, my guest speaker today, and he is actually the executive director of the Diabetic Singapore. So, hi, Juan. Yes, um, so we are, the, on this program, it's the uh, September is our uh, anniversary. So we are actually uh, celebrating our anniversary with lots of interview with um, our special guests. And we started with William Wongso. And then yesterday, uh, last week we have um, Raisin Tan, who is a ketonian, because he wants to reduce his um, blood pressure. So he actually opted to do a keto diet to help him control his high blood pressure. And today we will have um, Tiwari. He is a executive director of our uh, Diabetic Singapore. So, I'm um, just waiting for him, and we are actually at, I am, doing the Anti-Sugar Sugar Club, and that is um, where I believe I can actually live sugar-free, and, and I am very happy to be sugar-free, and it's healthy to be sugar-free, and so we are basically, I am in the business, of improving everybody's overall well-being by telling people that they should be sugar-free. So bear with me. <laughs> Thanks for joining everybody. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Dad. My dad is here. Yeah, so um, at Seriously Keto, we are actually um, hoping to provide an array of sugar-free products. And hey, wait, Tiwari is here. Let me invite him. There you go. Yeah, so, hi Lally, hi Tracia. So at Seriously Keto, we have um, a range of products which are sugar-free, so it's actually very, very... Um... Hi, Tori! Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I've just good, been good, good. telling people about our sh my sugar-free life. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, everyone, this is Tiwari. He is the executive director of the Diabetic Singapore. He's um, here to talk to us about um, sugar. <laughs> right? Yes. yes, sure. Sugar and not sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, how is it that you're working with the Diabetic Singapore? I think I... Uh... Basically, we are doing more on the war on diabetes. Our concern is more on uh, how to take care of people currently with the pre-diabetes and also the diabetes. As you know, one out of nine Singaporeans, they are diabetes. One out of nine? Yes. That is... Singaporeans are diabetes. We are one of the high lot. diabetes in Singapore yes. in the world. And uh, also, <clears throat> one out of uh, three is 
in the risk of developing diabetes this is for singapore and uh, out of one in three they doesn't know that they got diabetes oh they are unaware they are unaware of it and uh, as you know in singapore every day there's about four of them who got amputation <gasps> four of those yes. diabetics got amputation that yes. that's a big deal that is a that's big deal, deal. So that's what Diabetes Singapore is doing. We are doing the monitoring to avoid complications. That is why we do the, uh, the diabetic food screening to ensure they, uh, they don't have infection and all these things. Then we also check on their eyes, make sure they don't... That's to prevent blindness. Yes, yes, the, lit, uh, the food screening is to prevent amputation. The, uh, whereas the uh, retinopathy the, is to prevent blindness. And... Uh, the other thing is we do is we do the HbA1c. Yes. To look at the sugar thing, and our yes. nurses do a good job on the diet education. Mm. I think most of the problem we find is that they are not uh, aware of the proper diet. Yes. What to eat and then uh, what to control, and then uh, compliance to treatment. That's another yes. area which we find, and then uh, despite you on treatment on diet, they don't do the blood glucose monitoring. Yes, and um, the blood glucose monitoring, can they do it themselves? Can they prick their fingers yes, daily? Yes, I think that's where something they're supposed to do themselves. It's a very simple uh, device where you just prick and just take a, one drop of blood and you get your blood sugar level. So there is something where you can monitor if you find you are going, your sugar level is high then you, uh, and you got symptoms of thirsty and all that. We call it as hyperglycemia. Or you're mm -hmm. always feeling shivery and you feel tired and you're dizzy. So that's hypoglycemia. So that's what we do basically is to ask them to monitor the blood glucose level. Especially when they are sick, they should be monitoring more regularly. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Wow. That is, that is a lot of news. Like <laughs> in the beginning of the conversation, it's like, yeah. whoa, I'm bombarded by this data. Yeah. Okay. One, of, uh, one out of nine, that is a lot. A lot of people. Yes, and that's a lot. And one of three doesn't even know that they actually is um, having a uh, diabetic. And the best way to do this is to have your blood check. Uh, uh, that is the AB, ABA1C, right? The HBA1C. Uh, correct, yes. And then the other thing is also to know the sign and symptoms. Yes. What is diabetes? You get thirsty. Thirsty, you, get... you go to urine frequently, you got loss of weight, you got tremors and all these things. So these are some of the symptoms which you find that you are eating but you're still losing weight. So these are some of the symptoms of early signs of diabetes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. What are the age groups? Okay, the age group is also those who are younger, which we call it the type 1. But majority yes. we are looking is uh, type 2. Those yeah, what are, are what are the ages when you say that one out of nine? The, what are the ages uh, range of are age? At those above forty. Above forty. Yes. Okay. All right. So you guys, when you're above forty, make sure you get your blood glucose check very very frequently. Yeah. So oh my god, that is so scary. So um, you were saying that um, you actually guide them how to do their lifestyle. And yes. are they frustrated when you guide them? I think uh, there's a way of doing it. I think we always tell them the complications if you don't change your lifestyle. Uh, I, I mean, that is like scaring them, right? Uh, I think it's something you need to tell that reality. Yes. Because you know, because of diabetes, you can have stroke. Okay. You can have blindness, which I shared earlier. Yes. You can have heart attack. Chances of you getting heart attack is higher than those without diabetes. And then uh, you may heard of kidney failures. Yes, with the so dialysis. Then, so these are the things, if you don't change your lifestyle, you don't change your diet, you don't do exercise, non complicated then your chances of you getting complications is very, very easy. Oh my God. It is, it is, it is really, um, so actually um, I hear that uh, out of all sickness, uh, diabetic is actually one of the worst you could get because from being a diabetic, you actually go, um, it complicates a lot of uh, uh, 
a lot of your body system, yeah? Yeah, it's one of the chronic diseases, which mm-hmm. uh, if you don't monitor, then you ask any person who got stroke or heart attack, they tend to have diabetes. Oh my God. So it, it is the root of all evil, yeah? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. And um, why does this uh, diabetic so important uh, to you, Mr. Tiwari? Okay. I've been working in the elderly sector for many years. And I've seen the, basically the complications. I've seen all the complications. Means uh, those with stroke, bedridden, tube feeding. And uh, that was what I've seen the last 20 over years. Okay. So, and, uh, so when I was offered something to do in terms of diabetes, something new. So I find that it's challenging and uh, something which I want to really advocate. Yes. Yeah, advocate for people with diabetes. What about their lifestyle? How do you change your lifestyle? Uh, doing a lot of public education, awareness. So that's where you can see Diabetes Singapore. We are really geared up to do a lot of public awareness. Yes, I think I think a lot of people are not aware that um, there is a lot of hidden sugars in their food. So yes. um, although some things doesn't taste sweet, but there is that sugar factor in those. Like even milk actually has a lot of sugar. In, yes. Yeah. So um, what what are the few mis biggest misconception about this? Um, diabetic that people are unaware of? I think one thing is the, there's a denial, number one. Okay. I think, uh, and then uh, when they dine outside and all that, they know that they're not supposed to take certain food and all these things. Mm-hmm. But because of the social thing, they continue eating. So I think one of the biggest problems is the lack of awareness. Okay. What is a proper diet to take? What kind of uh, uh, carbo to take or less carbo to take or more fats to take or more protein to take. I think there's some lack of awareness on that. Okay. And um, how, how, do we, how do we give this information to the public? I think that's where our public awareness, like one of the things what you're doing now, yes. I'm very, very happy that I came, so I came over. I think that's <laughs> what we want. We want to engage people more. Yes. And engage okay. people what is healthy diet. Okay. And uh, what is um, how you eat, how you prepare. I think these are all things which is awareness is lacking. Yes. Yes. Um, talking about awareness, but because a lot of times, um, because the society, not the society, the community, actually like the fast, like the hawker centers or the restaurants that you go to, they're not mm-hmm. very supportive of um, having a non-sugar uh, laden kind of food that they actually serve. Although, you know, like if you go to just those uh, hawker centers, it's very, very difficult to find um, a food that is not, uh, there's not no sugar. <laughs> yes. So um, what do you suggest to these people? I think first thing is the, is the basic thing I think is, what is carbohydrates? What is protein? And uh, every food, there's a thing called glycemic index. Yes. I think there's a lot of people is not aware what is glycemic index. Yes. They think it's everything is uh, potato or what is, what is the difference between glycemic index? When you eat certain carbohydrates, suddenly there's a spike of your glucose level. Yes. So they say it's okay, just eat, but they don't, we not ask, you eat, but how to eat properly? Yeah. So that yes. you don't have your spike of your sugar understand so um and the other thing you were saying like denial and i mean like and and social and lack of awareness okay so the social thing sometimes is also um is habits it's a lifestyle it's how a do lifestyle. you change how do you change habits you know it's not something something you know like they always think that oh you know if you want to eat diet food it doesn't taste good uh, I think it's all first thing is to have an insight. For me, it's have an insight. If you are uh, already a diabetic and you want to have improved your quality of life, so nothing is impossible. Okay, it does have to come from yourself. So you it yourself, have to, come from yourself. Yes. have to want it. Yes. And, and, and what I understand from the diabetic friends that I have 
it's like they have a strong craving. And when this craving hits, it's not easy to deny those cravings. So what would you, I mean, like, you know, those, those smokers, they have nicotine patches. So what do this diabetic do when they have the cravings? I think it's basically they do is they still take by moderation. Oh, they okay. They take by in moderation, but so in terms of craving, I think it's again they know they do have the craving. Is how to control it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, send them to our place. We we fix their craving. <laughs> Maybe you can share with me what you do more with your food. <laughs> So yes, at Seriously Keto, we are very anti-sugar and uh-huh. what we have a range of uh, products that are sugar-free, sugar, non-added sugar. So our sugar comes naturally, I mean the carbs is naturally from the almond flour that we use. So okay. we, And the sugar we use, the substitute sugar we use is um, called erythritol, which is uh-huh. actually a diabetic safe I was told and I mm-hmm. think I've actually tried the glucose meter uh-huh. and every time I consume it I test it and okay. um, it, it kept it had kept my insulin at a very level um, very level for I, I did that for two weeks and I was able to control my my uh, insulin so anything that spikes up I wouldn't use so that's okay. that's where that's where we are but uh-huh. um and uh, we are actually also very, um, we want to introduce a lot of uh, awareness because this is something new. And I do closely believe that um, I think uh, sugar can be, can be eliminated and you still can have a sweet life without sugar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Okay, tell me more about this diabetic because you've been uh, working very closely to them, and um, there are there are a few types of diabetic. I understand there are some hereditary, some you got it when you're an adult. Okay, I think basically we go for this uh, type one. You tend to get it when you're younger. Yeah. Type two when you are more adult, and then there are this gestational diabetes. This is when. Uh, Women that they are during the pregnancy. Yeah, and, I and got those that. Women, and usually, when those women who are during pregnancy, they tend chances of them getting diabetes at later stage of life is higher. So yes. that's where they need to do more precautions. Yes, means their lifestyle, the food they're taking, the exercise, and all this have to start training from early. Okay, so um. When you when your parents are diabetic, does that mean you'll be diabetic as well? Uh Tanja Sahai. For me, my both parents are diabetic. And I know I will get it. But I'm doing uh preventing it by doing uh exercise, eating proper food and uh like what you shared earlier, I cut down I don't take my sugar at now at this time because I know I'll get it, but I want to delay. Okay, so by doing by changing a lifestyle, you can actually yeah, delay. You can actually yes. delay getting a diabetic. But are you sh- for sure will get it? Chances are very high because of my strong family hereditary. That mean does that mean your pancreas is a little bit weaker than others or? Uh, no, I think that because of the genetic. Genetic. Of me getting it, yeah, it's higher for me to get it. Okay, so um, you know when 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 people do get do cut out their carbs when they cut their sugar and their carbs, they always say, "Oh, headache, headache, headache." I don't. I mean, like I'm having a headache because I don't have enough sugar. That is for me. That is part of a withdrawal because um, sugar is actually uh, a drug. Addiction, it's, addic- yeah. it's an addiction. So when you when your body is um, getting rid of that sugar, you'll get that. That, that withdrawal symptoms and and a lot of people they don't want that feeling they don't want like oh I need sugar I need sugar and um, so um, that is the, that is the message that I've been trying to tell people that it's not it's not 
it's not um it is a it's a, it's a symptoms you need to you need to go through it you know mm-hmm. so um you know it's scary though but a lot of people are scared with that feeling of that 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 light headedness that giddiness that that withdrawal symptoms and and do we have a support system for them to go through that mm. i think basically this is where they, they they need to go for some counseling with the uh, diabetic nurse or with a dietitian usually the nutrition or dietitian can give them a better advice okay mm. okay because uh, as is with the uh, keto diet uh, they call that symptoms keto flu mhm that's when you get the rush of all those feelings you can get palpitations you get gui- diarrhea you get nauseousness it's exactly what just like what happens with double syndrome any with any drug to all symptoms syndrome. yeah so um uh we we in a way i i i tend to help my uh friends who is doing um going through keto flu to actually um just stick on it hang on to it and it will soon pass but it is actually a ex- it it is a very scary um moment when you're feeling that because because especially when you're alone and you don't have help that is mm-hmm. really um and and in the diabetic society are they aware that this would happen to them are they aware do they, they know of the symptoms what will happen when they are hypo what they supposed to do but i think most important is we i'm going towards the direction of support group uh uh-huh. yes support group is something where what you are sharing with me is what yes. you know you don't yes. able, let's say we sit down we are now we are talking to with each other that's yes. where i'm looking for the support group so there's yes. something which i find support groups will work better yeah i think what you shared like uh, your withdrawal syndrome and all that and other person in the group will say i've gone through this and this is how i overcome it so yes for me is this is a vicarious learning where you learn from your peers yes and i think I think it's imp- well community is really really important and yes. if 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 Singapore is having such um high numbers of diabetics uh, oh, don't you, Yeah don't you think we should actually um promote it more like in the FMB business that uh they should actually have at least one dish in every restaurant that has no sugar I think I saw we... you I will I will get for that please do because it's really I think, hard uh, i think was very happy when they they came out with uh, this uh, carbonated drinks and all these things where they cut down so for me i really i work it in fact i'm thinking more further just a, just my wish that you have a signage to tell that this is the restaurant you can eat oh yes please <laughs> you know like that a signage be... that uh, okay you see this logo or you just see this label if i'm a diabetic i will patronize you I know ah. you can give me the food. Okay, that's that's a good one. It's like that 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 uh, healthy choice uh, chop. Correct. They, yes. Yes, that actually um, so it would be it would be very very helpful if we could actually do that because um because there's so much hidden sugars if you go to the supermarket and you read all the labels because that's how I actually uh, tell my friends to actually always always read labels because sugar is everywhere and it has i don't know i think 100 different names for sugar no, even in every food so that's why i'm telling if we can have a label then the person preparing the food will, will know that i'm not going to put sugar yes yes even for example some of the nice dishes you add in sugar mm to make it tasty is it yes and then how much of carbo which is very high in carb and all these i think This is something if we can teach the hawker center, even to the level of the hawker center or even restaurant, I think will help yes. a lot of our diabetic patients. Yes, yes, it will definitely help because um, I myself um, is on very low carb, very low sugar, and it it is difficult. I for me to go to eat. to buy food in um, anywhere yeah. actually to eat out and to buy even groceries i actually really really read at the labels and and that's why i actually try to make everything myself because then i because mm-hmm. i don't trust what's out there 
because of that. And um, I always tell my friends that um, you cannot just, when you have a condition, you have to be prepared. You know yourself and you have to be prepared. You cannot, you don't want your blood sugar to go really low. So you always have to have something in your bag. You cannot mm -hmm. just like, like, oh, you cannot have an, oh no, that, you know, moment. Yes. <laughs> you know, I don't have anything to eat. Okay, that's the terrible mm. moment. So um, we have to actually help people to do that, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, there was a question uh, earlier in our, um, they were asking, would you actually suggest a keto lifestyle change to manage a diabetic? Well, for I think a low carb. For me, it's as long as you know that you want to have a lifestyle change, then yes. uh, and you know the whole thing, the process of how the carbo works, how uh -huh. it's going to affect you. I would strongly advocate that you really uh, find what will improve your blood sugar level. Okay. I think uh, so. There is something where you talk about keto means you must be aware that what is going to help you. Yes. How is going to help you and how uh, you shared earlier about the craving and all that, right? So how you can have the same thing, for example, I crave for, say, chendol. Oh, yeah. So do I have an alternative? Yes, I uh, actually always if tell if people, I'm yeah. If I'm a diabetic <laughs> and I want, am I craving for chendol and I can't take chendol, I'll steal and drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so actually, um, that's how I actually advise my friends too that's doing this, that uh, they, they should not eliminate um, their food and yes. they should actually uh, replace them. And that's, that's where I come in again. I am actually mm -hmm. in the business of replacing. <laughs> I don't have chandel for you yet, Tiwari. I'm so sorry. But I do have a replacement for a boba drink. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so I can try to make chandel next time for you. <laughs> so I myself is a digestional uh, diabetic. I was um, all my... Uh, pregnancies, I have to really watch out for my uh, sugar. Okay. And as my first daughter, when she was born, her sugar insulin was very, very dangerously low. That's because of me. So not only the mother is actually is in danger, but it's also the daughter. Okay. So yeah, so um, uh, after after her, all my uh, I was really concerned about my diabetic, digestional diabetic, and um, so she was the one that had. It was it was a scare for me. It was a very scary experience to to see that her that her insulin was really low, and um, that could that would could cause like a brain damage to the girl. I think, mm -hmm. right. If you have too low an insulin, yeah. So mothers, um, when you have digestional uh, diabetic, it's a really serious case. You cannot take it for granted, and not only for your do for your kids, but as for yourself. So that is one of the reasons why I'm actually also very concerned about um, my sugar. I don't want to be a diabetic. <laughs> Great. Um, come back to and um, so um, yeah, we kind of talked about uh, helping people to handle the condition, and um, and we talk about the type two diabetic and the, he, the hereditary. But apart from it being hereditary, you can actually get it from a lifestyle. Yeah. Um, for lifestyle is. If you don't do exercise, sedentary life, you go for your, every time go for your uh, drinking and all these things, that may trigger your pancreas to do it, to have a diabetes. But it's again your lifestyle. So that's why we always advocate for exercise, proper diet. And uh, when you say about exercise, we're talking about uh, 30 minutes of exercise about five times a, a week. 
Okay. And then, so, so this is something which you have to change your lifestyles and also your food. And, okay. So, um, but you can a healthy person without parents that's having diabetic. You can actually get a diabet. You can be a diabetic because of a lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, not really. Not really, but you can still get a, be a diabetic because uh, one of the predisposing factors for diabetes or even high is your lifestyle. Okay, so it, yeah, lifestyle contributes in you being yes, a diabetic. Sorry, yeah. yeah, okay, okay, that was okay. So you can be a diabetic because um, of a whatever, I mean, that lifestyle with high Diet carbs. Lifestyle you're doing. Yes, so. Um, that's 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 why a lot of people are diabetic here in Singapore is because of the way the food of the way they eat their food, yeah? And your lifestyle. Okay. Lifestyle means your food, your way you socialize and uh we like to eat and eat. Eat and eat and drink and eat and drink and eat. <laughs> so it just it just again comes under a lifestyle, your social lifestyle. Yeah. So, um, okay, there's a question here. Is it true that high triglyceride is the pathway to a diabetic? I won't be able to answer that because it's just medical. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, Mili, we'll answer this next week because we have a doctor coming up next week. And um, mostly, is it male or female that get diabetes? I think basically it's both of the same gender. Equal. I think it has, yeah, it has no, it doesn't choose ah, no. genders, right? <laughs> yeah, so, um, okay, I don't, I don't, myself, like I said, I, I actually chose this lifestyle because it's uh, suitable for me and being low carb is not as difficult as um, it seems. It mm -hmm. just is a high commitment and um so for me, I sometimes, like I said, you know, like, like when you were, when you were craving a chandel, so I'd yes. be good, I'd be good for one week and then I would eat a chandel, for instance, like a cheap day. Will that be okay for a diabetic to do that? It's okay. As long it's as okay. you control your, it is how you say, we always say eat in moderation. Okay. So if you're eating mirabos, then eat the noodle, but leave the gravy behind. Okay. So there is, you so that, so that basically, if, if you totally omit, then the cravings come. But I think basically what you're saying is eat anything but in moderation. So if you're drinking four spoons of sugar of coffee, then you slowly cut down to two, two sugar, one sugar, then you go for kopi o. Okay. That kind of thing. So that's where we're talking about local context. So you slowly tail down. Okay. Hmm. So that's again change of your lifestyle. So in fact, Mirabos gravy is very nice. So you just take a little bit and you leave behind. So that's already a, considered a good lifestyle change. Okay. All right. We have a question here. Uh, since Diabetes Singapore is the forefront in war on diabetes, wouldn't it be useful for them to promote low carb and keto and lifestyle changes to manage their diabetic instead of through medications? Uh, okay. What happened is that we are currently doing more on the war on diabetes we are taking the baby steps. So we are taking more on the first thing is the awareness. Then uh, educating them on the uh, lifestyle and all that. So I think this will be on later stage because we are yes. taking a baby, baby step. I think first thing is to, we want to create awareness first. That this is yes. a very uh, long-term disease which can create a lot of complications which I said stroke, heart attack and all that. So we are getting that. And then if you are diagnosed, what you do means your management of your thing. So the next, this will be a next step of how we can advocate together, work with you. Yeah. And um, I give, uh, I think basically it's an advocate, uh, educate people about this diet and how it benefits them. So yes, basically I... on the war on diabetes, now we are going basically it's more on awareness. Yes, I think people need to know what diabetic is and what it can do to you and actually it's preventable and and just being um, more aware. Uh, we yep. have another question from Shuhai Gul. Do we have data in Singapore that diabetics who adopt a low-carb lifestyle changes to be in remission? 
and is no longer taking any diabetic medication. Mm. Um, we, I can answer this next week. We have a doctor <laughs> that comes in yes. and he had actually done a reverse on a diabetic type 2. He actually had a few patients that had reversed from insulin jabs into no insulin jabs and eventually to nothing because the patients are very um, strict on their carb management, not really keto, but they're very, very strict on their large, uh, their carb management. So he, um, he believes in the anti-sugar. Yeah, I think um, it's, <laughs> yes, we all agree that sugar is really, really, really bad, but um, everything out there is with sugar and, 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 and since it has a very addictive uh, characteristic, it's not only hard to shake it off, but it's, um, what do you call that? It's very ruining, yeah, to yourself. <laughs> Anything else to add, to worry? No, I think the, you shared something I also learned from you today. Yes, I think uh, I think it was a two way, and I will engage you again more on your keto diet. Oh yes, yes, it is. Um, uh, and give me a Kindle, uh, keto Kindle. Yes, I'll do that to you. <laughs> it's gonna be my mission. <laughs> so right now we actually have an all-purpose dough, which which we can actually make into pizza. Uh -huh. And a low carb pizza, and we can do um, uh, what do you call that? Pot pies. We can do a lot of things with that uh, pizza dough, and we can do that Korean sweet. Uh, what do you call that? That the pro the most popular Korean cheese sweet cheese thing. Yeah, with that dough. So <laughs> mm -hmm. yes, I'm trying my best in my in my area to be a supportive community so that we don't eliminate, but we replace. Yes. <laughs> you are doing a good national service. <laughs> national service. Okay. I know, but then we have to work together. This is yes. a, not, not, not a single person's work. This is a work of a team, a community and... Um, but yeah, I think it's a community, yes. It's a community, yeah, and a social awareness when when people actually say no to sugar, you shouldn't force them. <laughs> okay, then I think um, we can wrap it up for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. You're more and, pleasure. And I I am always supportive in the not the diabetic uh, campaign. Thank you, thank you, Tiwari. Good night. Thank you. Say good night.